My guest for the morning, Joseph Nia Dekoka, is the chairman of NDC Greater Accra. And thanks for joining me, sir. And uh, also a member of parliament for Akimodan William Ejapon Kwetu. Thanks for joining me, sir. Thank you. All right. And so we'll have to start our discussions. And um, uh, the, the president has come out and said there's no decision on whether Ghana will be hosting the Afghan 2015 uh, because Morocco had written uh, to CAF and race concerns, etc. And in the event that Morocco is not able to host, CAF has written to Ghana. Alongside also, they wrote to South Africa. Yesterday, there were newspaper reports that were saying Nigeria would also be interested in hosting. I would want to ask you, um, what should be the four thoughts as far as official dominant leadership of Ghana is concerned on this very subject? I'll start with you, Mr. Kwetu. Yeah, thank you so much. And uh, I want to say a very good morning to your listeners, particularly those within my constituency, Akimoda. Uh, I thought that would have taken a cue from why Morocco is saying that they're not going to host it. I should think that probably is due to this scare of uh, Ebola. And for the past one month or so, everywhere I went, I've been asking how prepared Ghana is when Ebola breaks out in Ghana. Likely so far, Ghanaians, uh, we are so religious and God has been good to us. We have not had any single uh, uh, case of Ebola in the country. That does not mean that God will always be good to us. If we don't really do what we are supposed to do to prevent the outbreak of Ebola in Ghana, mm -hmm. it will definitely strike. And when it strikes, are we able to contain it? And so looking at the way uh, this football organization is done, how countries get prepared, and the number of people who flock into various countries when we are hosting this uh, kind of uh, tournament. We should all ask ourselves, are we prepared to receive all such people? Are, do we have all the necessary gadgets to screen and screen well, such that uh, when we host, we host this uh, uh, tournament, we are able to make sure that nobody enters into the country without any trace of Ebola? When President Mahama went ahead to uh, more or less nominate Accra, for that matter, Ghana, as a hub of Ebola studies, on GTV I asked, several stations I asked, is President Mahama very sure that we are prepared to handle any case of Ebola? If that is the case, then fine, because when something happens, everybody is needed to come on board to help. And so using Accra, which is more or less the most peaceful, I should say, country within the sub-region here, and uh, we not having Ebola. Mm. To me, it was good somehow. But in Parliament, we asked a question. We said that the minister should come and explain to us the rationale behind President Mahama accepting to use Ghana as a hub for Ebola studies and other activities. But so far, he's been proved Yes, right. so far, yes. Well, you say he's your, question, right. your questions are wrong. My questions? I mean, not you, per se. No, no, no. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't say, body. yes, as a body, I wouldn't say, you see, it always comes from the minority. The majority didn't support it. So nobody came to parliament. And it was just brush off. We are a minority. So it was brush off. But at least we wanted to know why do we use Accra for that. They should convince us. Tell us. Let us know that, yes, Ghana is prepared. Okay, because you see, when we are using Ghana as a, as a point of study, as a focal point, people who be coming in are only people who are experienced in the disease, who are coming to discuss and more or less take actions. Is it not about the technical support, etc., and technical the expertise who will come yes. and, and discuss it? Yes, expertise. But is it some of them... You think they'll be infected with Ebola and so will come out and start infecting Ghanaians? That is what we want. We want to know if there will be people who are just certainly free. And if you say you're an expert, I, don't, I wouldn't know how you are an expert if you haven't come close to Ebola. Isn't that preemptive? Well, but so far, the president has been just... vindicated, right? So far, that's what you say. Mm. But Ebola okay, I would so, want to ask you this question. Ebola is so if if the president is the is the chairman of ECOWAS, what sort of responsibility do you think he needs to take onto himself to show leadership in this very thing? No, you see, taking that decision because so to far me, he seems to have taken the right steps. Yes, taking that decision to me, I never begrudge him. But all that we're asking for is that please convince us that we are positioning ourselves to do that. It's not a matter of skepticism on your part. No, well, well. Of course, I'll be, I'll, be, I'll be a bit skeptical. And I didn't ask that question. The members of the health committee who did that, particularly Napo, mm. had that uh, question. And we, of course, we all agreed at a meeting that we're going to call the minister to do that. We put in a question and 
the minister never showed up. Of course, we were just called for uh, uh, three days to do something. And within the three days, we wanted the minister to come and convince us. And so to me, is it the answer here that we have not taken a decision yet? It means that the president and probably his advisors are still thinking about it. But the answer to me should be that, how prepared are we? If we are prepared and we know that we can handle it, fine. Then the answer should be yes. If we are not, the answer should be no. Mm. Yes. Uh, are, are, we, are we jumping the gun? Yeah. Are, we, are we putting the cat before the horse? Well, and let me say good morning to yourself and my brother here. You see what Ebola is doing to all of us? <laughs> <laughs> it's making us jittery. <laughs> it's making everybody jittery. Yes, it's, it's causing a, a fear and panic, mm. right? Just this morning, it's been recorded in New York, yeah, Canada, yeah. and in Denmark. You, you see, Just so, this morning. Well, that according to the latest news. But Nigeria has been... Nigeria has been declared free. Yeah. So you mean uh, uh, the passion of the people, you know, that is football, is not even under threat as a result of Ebola. Right, and uh, if you are not careful, every aspect of our life will soon be Ebola, and nobody will want to do anything. This is why I'm saying that uh, it's about time we rather look at the preventive measures, right? Because this should not uh, 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 disallow us from, I mean, enjoying life. Football is part of our normal activities. But you enjoy life with caution. I'm and you not, can't enjoy life when Ebola is around. But that's why I'm saying that we should look. See, we are not looking at how to prevent the Ebola from coming to this. So my brother rightly said, "Have we put the preventive measures up? You know, our borders and all the, uh, this area are very porous. What are we doing about it? We don't talk about how we are going to prevent the disease, but how uh, uh, we just go about trans oh, Ebola is coming. Ebola is coming. Don't do this. I mean, football is even affected. So I believe that." we should rather look at how we are going to ensure that these things, this kind of disease does not really hit this country. He, he rightly said, God has been kind to us so far, not, nothing of that sort has happened. I believe we shouldn't go, uh, Morocco, Morocco is just trying to behave as if uh, that's the end of the world, if, uh, if, if, we go, if, the, if, the, if the, host. the tournament. I think they should go ahead and host it, and also ensure that's your that, opinion. Yeah, you think should, Morocco, Morocco should, should go, ahead. go ahead and host it because 2017, if Ebola has not been eradicated, are we going to have have 2017 and beyond? You see, this is something that is is going to is not going to go away today. It's going to stay with us it's for a very long time. It's a virus. So, are we going to say that we are going for forever and ever? We are no more going to play football. Uh, 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 in, the, in the, the part of, of the world. The World Cup is coming 2018. Is Russia going to say because of Ebola, is they going to know? We should rather look at this holistically. And like the president said, and, and uh, uh, the president of Liberia recently said, the, the world must take a very serious view of it and should be holistically. Everybody should come on board and try to put preventive measures out, uh, out there to, 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 to stop this Ebola uh, see what what people are failing to do, right? If you are exiting, you see, if, if pe people are coming, you are screening them. But when you are exiting, Should do people screen. get screened when they are exiting? Because you exit and, and take the disease to somebody's country, you understand? So all these things that uh, uh, like Ebola appeared in America, and that, people who left probably Liberia and went to America and that kind of thing. So when you are exiting, there must be an exit policy. When you are exiting, people must be screened. That is when we can, so it should be both with, not only coming in, but going out as well. And that will probably uh, uh, help stand the tide of affairs. But for, for us to start attacking the various economic structures that we need to survive on because of Ebola, we're going to have crisis on our hands. Mm. So the, I the, 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 the president was quoted on BBC uh, in an interview saying that uh, well, God has been on the side of Ghana, but it's also because great caution has been taken with the plans and, 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 and the, the various supports and coordination that has been undertaken locally uh, to make sure that we don't have the disease in Ghana. Um, would you say you, you've been satisfied so far? No. No, because uh, all this thing that he's talking about uh, has not been, uh, it's not been well publicized. The information is not out there for people to see. I'm a member of uh, Akimo Dan Government Hospital. And so in our last meeting... You're a board member? Yes, I'm right. a board member there. In our last meeting, I asked what preparations have they done to, to curb any incidents of Ebola. And all that they said was that a number has been given. You know, they, are, they work under the regional 
uh, government hospital. That we are now is under Kufuria. So that they have asked them to do uh, one, two, three tests. And what is it? If you identify anybody or if you see any uh, symptoms or anything that is Ebola, quickly quarantine the person mm -hmm. and report. Mm -hmm. That's all. You understand me? Quickly quarantine and report. And so I said, you know, that here is that all that we can do? No, Oda is a hospital which takes care of a lot of ladies around. It cuts across about five mm. districts because the government built that. I initially, during the olden days, I think all these five districts where uh, the municipality was within Oda. And so we don't have any big hospital <coughs> apart from, apart from that. And so you have a lot of people coming there. If you go there in the morning, you see, you look at the OPD, the number of people mm. that you have there. Assuming someone has Ebola and you say, <laughs> if you. If you I, I identified mm. that person, and the person had their symptoms already. Would have, the person would have affected more than 20 people within that day, that same morning, before you go and quarantine the person and make a call. That is all they have been asked to do. Okay. Uh, the last time I was on another station, I asked a question. I was meeting somebody from from uh, the US. The person comes in. I got there just when the aircraft was landing. Mm. So when I parked my car and went to the within a short time, I said, Ah, we've been so fast coming out. No screen, nothing. Well, I'm a Ghanaian, so I went through the Ghanaian line. <laughs> and when I said that, I don't think there's proper screen at the airport. The regional minister sent in information that there's serious screening going on at the airport. You see, I want to see us having the structures, such that when you are living, just like mm -hmm. this yellow car that we, mm -hmm. anytime mm -hmm. you are traveling, you have to go mm -hmm. and make sure mm -hmm. you have distance. Mm -hmm. So nobody should leave this country yeah. without being screened. Nobody mm -hmm. should come in without being screened. Yeah. Look at how Ebola got into uh, America. Nigeria. No, okay. America first. A Liberian who lives there comes for holiday mm. in Liberia, lives in a kind of, kind of a compound setting. Someone there is pregnant and sick. Just up the girl into a car. That is how mm -hmm. he got it. He flies into America without any proper screening. Mm. He gets the Ebola, the nurse attracts it, and then America is recorded as having Ebola. No, well, he, he was asked the questions, all right. Mm -hmm. The temperature thing was taken. Mm -hmm. But once the temperature was taken, it w because it was in the incubation period, he didn't manifest any mm, symptom yes. because the first sign initially when the outbreak was mm. that when you have any sign of increased temperature, then you assume that you need to be quarantined, especially when you are coming from an infected country. Now they've changed the procedures, etc. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, so, so I, I told myself that, wow, if even the whole America could get it in this way, then we are not saving Ghana. Mm. So you see, if president is saying that there are enough structures put in place to do this, let's know them. Let's 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 let them be visible so that we mm. know it. I'm just talking from uh, my constituency, mm. or where I go there sometimes. Now you know, I did see... talking like a member of yes. parliament because yes. you're a member of parliament, yes, member and, you, so... and you are a party here. And, mm. and and for you, you are, you also tend to interact with a lot more people, even mm. people who who travel from outside the mm. country, and you even deal with mm. people um, who are in the business community, etc. Mm. Uh, would you say that? as somebody who should take um, a public health issue very serious, we have given the indications thereof locally. Um, you, you, have give, you have been given the indication that the medical association, the public health institutions we have are ready. And so all these indications will give you that very perception that we're indeed ready. Just like the president perhaps is also saying outside there that we're indeed ready. Well, we can never be ready until we start actually talking about it every day. For people to know, and we don't seem to be doing. We don't that. seem to be doing that. I mean, we, we okay, you, 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 gentlemen and ladies who do commentary tend to talk, talk, talk about talking about. But, you see, but you're not the mainstream people. No, who no, be you know, you, you, you want to see it. the medical services. I mean, coming on air, radio, you know, and even at the at the at the exit points or at the airports, you know, there must be pamphlets and all these things. People coming in. I mean, there should be some. We should show some visibility. Right. Emergency too. That's right. So that people will be aware. I mean, anybody, the moment you step at Kodoka Airport, I mean, there must be evidence that people are being screened. You know, you go to South Africa, you go to China. The moment you get out of the plane, you can see the gadgets there. You can see yourself in, in those gadgets being screened, you know, they, for, for heat, uh, heat your, your, your temperature and that kind of thing. We need to. Um, to say that we are prepared, I believe that. For me, I believe Ghanaians have become cautious now. Everybody is aware that this uh, epidemic is around, right? But like you rightly said, still we shouldn't be complacent. Mm. That's the bottom line. 
we shouldn't be complacent. Perhaps but government needs to do more, don't you think? Uh, well, I'm not necessarily talking about government. You know, the Ministry of Health. Health, that's right. There are institutions. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Given the resources yeah, to do yeah, that. Yeah, there are institutions, like you are saying. I mean, he, he spoke about Akimoda. It's a very large community, community area that people need, they need to quickly establish the warning signals there. The, 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 uh, like what you've done at uh, Tema General Hospital. Or they should go and put, I mean, there should be some visibility. People should see that, and it, it gives a lot of confidence when you do this. Thing. But, you know, government hasn't gone to sleep. Government is taking the relevant steps. But again, it behoves on all of us to come on, on board and, and talk about it. And uh, every day as we talk about it, people become aware. And that. But now, what is happening is that, you mm. see, here's a situation where when a, I'm not being racist this morning. When a white person gets Ebola, he gets he or she gets cured. Yeah. But when a black person gets Ebola, he or she okay. dies. Mm -hmm. And we are not addressing the issue. We are not asked what is going on. Uh, there are a lot of conspiracy theories going around, whether it is true or false. And you're also finding the conspiracy theories. I'm not finding the con No, no, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, we have, no, we, we, have to, we have to educate yeah, the really people. Yeah, person. we have to, yeah. people must, uh, must be, aware of what is going on and ask questions. The med medication, why is that we, if, if true there's uh, 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 medicine for the cure of Ebola, why is that we are not talking about it for that medi those medications we brought to Africa or West Africa, wherever it is, but rather people are dying and you don't see what kind of treatment mm. are they getting? According to the report, the Duncan gentleman was mm. not given the Z-mat. He was yeah. given some other specimen. That's right. But I was also under, yeah, going the, through some yeah, level the, of the, the lady uh, 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 in Spain, and the husband. Both of them have been cured because they, they gave them uh, <laughs> the, the, the right medication. medication. So what's happening to it? These are the kind of things that we need to talk about yeah. so that we, 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 we interrogate what is actually happening. Is this a conspiracy theory or not? Roland, me, I am scared about Ebola. You see, mm. Don't travel. Stay home. <laughs> <laughs> you see, but even mm. if you are at home and it will happen to you at home, I mean, yes, it's, just, it's just by God's grace. Mm. You see, we have several entry points into the country. And that's a but fear. That's a fear. Particularly our fishermen, look mm. at the way they fish. Travel all the way to Guinea somewhere, and then by the same time they go to Cameroon. They, they go to some of those. It's, it's, they even go to Dia Congo. They, they go very far. Yeah, go very far. It's, it's scary. It's scary. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know much of our bodies, but at least uh, I was at Coco Bot, so I know several Coco entry points. Like if you go to the western side and come to the Togo borders, the way Ghanaians move across there. I mean, footpath. They are going in, in the next time they are here. It's just um, mm. some woodlands. Woodland, yes. And you can just, just enter yes. through. Yes. Who's, who's you go to Bonafo, for example. Yes. It's scary. Yes. You, you just yes. go to Cote d'Ivoire in Devoir, a yeah. matter of minutes. So, mm. or all you go those to places, the Volta region. You the government is saying that we have put enough structures in place. What about those places? What about those places? Mm. We're told, Mr. Adekoka, that what Cote d'Ivoire and Senegal have done, they've moved troops, paramilitary troops. Mm. And it could be any of the security agencies, perhaps they have deployed. I haven't seen the videos myself, but that's, that's what I've read. And they've lined them on the borders to Liberia. You know, Cote d'Ivoire is bordering mm -hmm. Liberia. Mm -hmm. And Senegal, Guinea, and the rest. So at least they are preventing the entries from me. Yeah. Now, how then do we make sure that when we, are, when we also have some of these borders, we are just not leaving it to, let's say, only immigration and SEPs, but we really have deployed people who should be deploying. What, 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 how should we be replicating what is being done in the sub-region? Yeah, be, because there, our president is the chairman of yeah, ECOWAS, for God's sake. Well, there should be a concerted effort, and also there will be a uniform effort. But the, the countries that are bordering uh, these Ebola-infested areas, you know, and Cote d'Ivoire and Senegal, they are very close to Sierra Leone and Liberia and that kind of. Thank God, we are, we are a bit further apart. Uh, we have to go. When, when yeah. Nigeria is more federal. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. It's I, more. I, I, I it's more. It's more. It's but well, we we can say you are also further apart. <laughs> but I agree with you. We should we should emulate the effort that other countries are. It should be it should be a unif. There should, should be, be some concerted, concerted effort mm. that uh, if we have to put troops at those entry points that are porous, then we must do it. And also, they also must be protected. You see, you, you just don't go and put them there without them having the requisite protection. Because you never know, after they've gone there, they are coming back. You don't know what they'll bring back. Mm. So this, the, the, uh, every effort must be made to. But the important thing is the cure. We are not talking about the cure. If you don't find a cure, 
whatever preventive measures you take, you will never get, you will never get out of it. Let, let me make this in. Yesterday, I was coming from my concert, and then at Kaswa, those who give there. Are the tools at the tools? Mm -hmm. You put on gloves. Mm -hmm. The constituency is in, is in Kaswa. No, my constituency is in Akimoda. Mm -hmm. So, what's driving to Accra? Mm -hmm. at, at, at Kaswa, at the Kaswa mm -hmm. toll booth. Mm -hmm. Those who give out the ticket and yeah. take your money, mm -hmm. they are in gloves. Mm -hmm. And then, so when she's giving to you, uh, you pass to the. Uh, uh, okay. yeah. Yeah. So, do do it. And then, you see, she's in gloves. And then she's touching. I say, you will be the worst person to spread Ebola more if. if Really, someone has it because you take it, mm -hmm. and then you are touching my hand. Everyone mm -hmm. who comes that is not in gloves, and you are touching the person. So just stay there. If it is anything at all, hold the tip of the ticket. Let me also take my ticket there and then put it somewhere. Mm -hmm. I told them yesterday that you are trying to protect yourself, but if anyone has Ebola and you contract it, you are going to spread it to all other person that you touch. So we should think about it. Mm -hmm. I said that. I, I told them it's, it's a daunting mm -hmm. task. Yeah. Well, sometimes when you hear about the stories of the infection and the way sometimes it, 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 it occurs, it's scary. Yeah. Because the way we live, the way we. In Ghana here. Yes. Yeah. We greet each the other. Communism. We, yes. Mm -hmm. I, I, I meet you, I greet you, I, I meet. And you don't know whether I'm infected or you're know, infected. I went, to I went to a church on it's, Saturday. It's scary. And, uh, and even the pastors the tell you to walk hard. Yes. Yes. The, the congregation was... show love yeah. for Jesus. Yes. The mm. place was so packed. And I was sitting there as a wandering. And there was and everybody sweating after. Sweating and... You know, song ministration and all that yeah. thing. I mean, we do have to put fear and panic in the system. Right? <laughs> life must go on. Life, must, a, go life on. must go on. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you know, sometimes <laughs> we do the education. Yes, yes. That's Myself, yeah, you, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and all those who are taking the decision. So sometimes uh, we're hoping that a lot of things. Uh, hmm. But if, if we go on and on and on, I like I said, we'll stop talking to anybody. Mm. Because of that, we, we can't even play football. Yeah, we, we will stop even playing football <laughs> in our own country. You know, we have to play at the empty stadium. <laughs> right. Okay. We'll see how that goes. But.